In this sample, we're going to return to samples one and two, or excuse me, two and three, and determine if the collisions in those samples were elastic or inelastic. So for part A, we're going to return to the hockey players from example 9-2. So you might want to review that one before we before you do this. Uh, the mass of the first player was 100 kilograms, and the mass of the second player was 80 kilograms. The initial velocity of the first player was 5 meters per second, and the initial velocity of the second player was 0. So let's calculate the initial kinetic energy. That is 1 half the mass of the first player times his initial velocity squared, plus one half the mass of the second player times his initial velocity squared, okay, which gives us an initial kinetic energy of 1,250 joules. Remember, this is zero, right? So there's the initial kinetic energy. So we have to look at the final kin kinetic energy, and the final velocity of player one was two meters per second. Now, we don't need to worry about which direction it is. So we don't need to worry about plus or minus here because we're going to square the velocities in our k equals one half mv squared. So it doesn't matter which direction the velocity is. Remember, energy is a scalar quantity anyways. So I'm not worrying about directions. The final velocity of the second uh, hockey player is 3.75 meters per second. So when we do the final kinetic energy is one half m1 times v1 f squared plus one half m2 v2 f squared. So I'm going to leave the calculations to you, but what we get is a final kinetic energy of 763 joules. So since we lost kinetic energy here, this is an anelastic collision because the um, the way you decide whether a collision is elastic or inelastic is not what happens, not if they stick together or bounce apart, but is kinetic energy conserved or is it lost? Now, it's not going to be gained in any situation here, so it's either the same or it's lost. It's clearly lost here, so that collision was inelastic. Um, so we'll move on to the next one. So part B is the three billiard balls from sample... Four. Um, so in that problem, we had three balls and they all had a mass of 160 grams. So we can just call that M. Uh, in the before situation, okay, um, one ball was moving and two were at rest. So the kinetic energy here is one half times the ball's mass times its speed is 1.7 meters per second. We have to square that, and we get 0 0.23 joules. All right, now in the after, let's do final kinetic energy. And I'm going to leave a space here, and I'll explain that in a minute. So we have the two balls are both moving at 1.2 meters per second. So I've got my 1 half, 0.16 kilograms, times 1.2 meters per second quantity squared. But I've got two balls that are doing that, so I've got a times two out here in front. So each ball has a mass of 160 grams, is moving at 1.2 meters per second, and there are two of those balls. So I sort of shortcut this, is 0.23 joules. Now, if the two balls had different masses, I could just find the energy of one and the energy of the other, and then add them up, but I didn't have to do that since they were the same mass and going the same speed. We got to shortcut it here. So at the end of the day, the initial kinetic energy is equal to the final kinetic energy. Since it was a collision, we know momentum was conserved. That's not a question right now. But since kinetic energy was conserved, this was an elastic collision. And you'll grow to have a feeling for like, oh, that's for sure going to be inelastic. But then for items that are mostly rigid, you're going to say, oh, you know what? That's probably elastic because they're rigid and they tend to bounce, bounce back. But you can never assume, okay? You always have to do the kinetic energy calculation before you can say that's an elastic collision. And we did, and so we can.